What's going on guys? This is Kazi. Welcome back to another epic video. And before we even begin, let me just put a little disclaimer out there. The beginner part of this tutorial is comically exaggerated and that's just for a good reason. Um, so we can drive the point home, right? Like we've all been there in some sort of way, but not as crazy as like what you're going to see when I build out the beginner part. But just wanted to throw that out there. And guys, last day to join my masterclass with the special discount. We have 4,000 members in just about two years. And they're not just members. They are raving fans because countless of them have achieved unimaginable results. You don't want to miss out on the opportunity. The link is going to be in a card up above. There's going to be a link in the description. So check it out. Join FCM before it's too late. And for those that are enjoying the content, smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following us on Instagram and let's roll the intro. All right, guys, as always, let's get the show on the road. So first, we're going to build this grade with the rookie, and then we're going to put a pro in this chair and have him attack it and show you the right way to do this. So first of all, a rookie wouldn't know what they're really working with or how to set it up. So this stuff is shot with red, and uh, I can show you what I mean. If I go under edit and uh, here, if we select our metadata, which is down here, let's just hide inspector so as of now we don't know what camera is shot with but if you click right here and select camera all of a sudden boom we get all this data it's shot with helium 8k camera we get our shutter iso and uh, color temperature and all that very useful information right here and uh, now that we come back here so again a rookie wouldn't know any of this rookie wouldn't even know how to set up everything in here so he will leave it as is okay it could be an okay thing and it could be a very bad thing, especially when you're coming from a color grading point of view. And then to double down on the mistakes that a beginner would make, what they would do is not take full advantage of their primaries, which is this area right here. So what they would usually do is they'll go, hey, the highlights are kind of getting pretty hot, so let's bring that down. So right now I'm using my gain and they'll bring that down a little bit and then they'll go, okay, maybe we can add a little bit more color. So they'll go under saturation and add more color and then dial it back because they're always freaking out thinking about they're going to ruin anything. So they're just not really maximizing what red has to offer. So they'll leave their image somewhere around here and then right away, they'll start getting into building out power windows and then cover up mistakes or in their head, try to add more information but uh, this is the ultimate mistake for you to not have a plan going in and setting up everything like I just showed you up until that point. So they're setting themselves up for a failure is what I'm trying to tell you. So now they're going to just jump in into power windows without really having a game plan. So the first mistake that a rookie usually makes with power windows is this. Let's just say they create a power window and it's a circular window and uh, they'll move it around here to bring this down a little bit because it's it's just kind of taking away from our hero, right? Like our focus just becomes what's over here. And first of all, let's move it over to our hero frame, which is around here. So they'll leave their window right here and they won't really move it around or angle it or anything. And then let's just say they wanna bring the intensity down. So they're gonna go under their gain and they'll pull it down. And they'll leave it somewhere around here and they'll be like, okay, now our focus is, uh, you know, more on our guy than this. There's a couple of things that are wrong with this. Um, one, a rookie wouldn't know which parameter from their primaries or their curves to use to properly bring this down. So anytime they make a change, they'll be using the wrong parameter. So that's one. Second, if I go back into my window and go away from it, you see this harsh line that's the first mistake that they'll make they don't know how to properly feather their window so it blends in better and you can do it right here in your softness and obviously when i show you the pro way we're going to do it right but right now we're just pointing out what a beginner would do so they'll have this type of action going on that's a dead giveaway that there's a window there so that's the first mistake they'll make the second one is exaggerating their corrections so once again let's create another circular window they'll put it right here let's just say they want to kind of bring this down too so we can have more focus on our guy what's going to happen is that they can go under their 
gain and then pull it down and just exaggerate it too much. And trust me, you all have been there, especially as a beginner colorist, where you just exaggerated something and then just thought that it's okay to just leave it in. Next step, a mistake a rookie would make is that way too many windows. They'll just, because they didn't do their prep right, they didn't set up the image, proper exposure, proper color and everything to begin with. Now they have to just play catch up. So they'll have so many windows going on everywhere. So they can have a window up here and they'll go, all right, let's bring this down. And then they'll have um, another window right here. And they'll be like, let's take some emphasis off of this. And then they'll have another window because now they're thinking that, you know, maybe we should bring this area down as well because it's just too punchy compared to everything else. So they'll put this window right here and they'll just bring that down. And right now, if we go and look at it, I mean, it's just, it's a mess. And that's the thing. I have seen people in my own masterclass before they start taking all the lessons and then develop a certain set of skills. They are making these mistakes. I might be exaggerating it a bit more to just make my point, but trust me, we've all been there, okay? And then another mistake a beginner would make is choosing the wrong type of window for what they're trying to bring out. So let's use this as an example. For bringing out our subject here, they might have a window like that. And usually what a beginner would do is that they'll go, oh, this is in the shadow, so let me use my lift and bring this up. I promise you, I've seen it. So instead of using their gamma or gain, they'll use the wrong parameter. And now just look at it. So there's two things that are wrong. One, you're using the absolute wrong parameter and it's lifting up the shadows making it look super unnatural. And second, you're using the wrong type of window. And in the pro version, I'll show you how to attack that and do it the right way. Then we move on to another issue, which is so many people will do a generic vignette. So they'll have a window like that, right? And uh, it'll be, let's just do this kind of window right here. So you have a generic vignette, something like that. and let's just say they'll bring this up, right? Like they're just like, all right, let's bring some information up so we can see our guy in here. But then they'll go and create another window to do the outside. And then they'll try to mimic the window and then they'll do invert and then they'll control the outside and bring it down. What they don't know is that there's a tool where you can just create an outside node to attack that. And once again, in the pro video, I'll show you that exactly how to do. And then the final step that I wanna talk about that beginners do, people that are just starting out with color grading, they have no idea about this area right here, which is a tracker. And if I were to play this right now, look at what's happening with our windows. They're not moving, they're not, nothing is tracked. So that's why I keep telling everybody that try to get your image in the ballpark by using primaries and global settings so everything is built in and you can avoid making these mistakes because you are just doing so much work and it's not helping you. It's making your image so much worse than if you would have just like left it as is like this would have been better. Right. So this is the kind of mess that I've seen rookies create day in and day out. I'm not making this up. And uh, now let's go in, create a pro version and uh, see how a pro would approach. A shot like that with power windows. So this is what a pro would do. Pro will first analyze what kind of footage he's dealing with. So he's going to go in here or she, and they're just going to select that and turn it into clip and then modify it. And he would put it under log three G10. Okay. Why is that? Because he wants full control on what's happening here. But before he even he builds out his entire node tree, he or she is gonna look at this image and go, what do we need to work on? What do we need to create? So here's our guy, but there's brighter areas than our dude here. So let's set up our proper exposure first to our skin tone and our hero. Let everything else fall wherever it needs to go. Then we're gonna have a window to kind of control this. We're gonna have a window to bring this down. We're gonna have a window to kind of bring this area down and we're gonna have a window to bring up our car and our dude and hopefully both in the same. 
So we'll have four windows and then we'll have a global adjustment node and then CST. That's it. So that is already a plan, which is way more than what a rookie was doing. So here, we're going to go here. We're going to go four windows, one global node, and then one CST. So here I can just come in and drag our color space transform, go here, hit red or R, and then go select red, white gamut. And then here I'll select um, red log three G10. As soon as I do that, we're already getting such a better result than what a rookie was getting. Um, and we can even see that if I go back here and kill all of this, like look at how much desaturated the image was for a rookie compared to the kind of results we're getting and the kind of information we're getting in our image as a starting point. So now that we're here, this is what a pro would do. He would look at this image and go, what can I do to bring out as much information as possible? So I will go in my gamma and I'll start raising that up. I'll go in my gain and I'll pull it down just a little bit, not too much. And I'll pull up my gamma a little bit more. And I'm going to take my lift and I'll pull this down just a little bit, not too much, something like that. And now we have already lifted our image just enough. It's not unnatural. Everything is still looking like it belongs, like it was shot that way. Another thing that Pro would do is he will start driving a little bit of a look in this part. So now I'm in my printer lights. So keep an eye on my offset right here. And uh, let's just go for a little bit of mood. So I'm going to add a bit of cyan. So like, right, uh, we're creating a really cool mood now. And then I'm going to go and just add maybe a little bit of, uh, let's go for a cold look. And then let's just add maybe one red. Um, and let's see, what do I want to do? Maybe bring up the yellow a little bit. One more red, that's too much. So something like that even, right? So like if I do before and after, it's already being very stylized and looking pretty cool. Another thing that a pro would do is he will pull up his scopes and have a four up minimum instead of like the one scope that a beginner was using. So this way we can get a bit more information. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select my preset here. And that usually gives me more than enough information that I need. So let's kill this. Let's move that over to buy some real estate. Perfect. So now we're looking at um, all the information that I need to pay attention to. So what I'm seeing is that I'm looking at my vector scope and it's falling a little bit more on the moody side and that's okay. But you see like how much my blues are lifted and then green and then black. So let's try to control that a little bit. So I'm going to go under my log wheels and I'm going to try to balance that out a little bit. Like I, I can still leave it a little bit like how it is, but let's just balance it a tiny bit. Okay. So even something like that. Now what I would do is I'm going to go under my midtones and I'm going to raise it up to add a little bit more red. So like look at right here is where we're making the difference, right? So like just adding a little bit more, it's pulling up his skin. And now what I can do is I can click on this, hover over his skin. And this is our skin indicator right here. So see what happens when I hover over his skin. My skin indicator is right in the middle. Perfect. So the skin tones are looking great. At this point, we can leave this like that because we've created a really cool ambiance and this color, yet we are not messing with the skin tones. They are looking perfect. So we can just leave that like this. Then a pro would go in here, try to use his knowledge and apply more OFX and things to the footage to make it look special. So in here, I would just apply soft light. I'll pull this back. And then I'll go, what do I need? So maybe I need to bring up the brightness a little bit. And it's looking a bit too dreamy. So that's not what I want. I want it to kind of just look a bit more punchy. So let's see. Hold on. So even if we go somewhere around here, now it's looking a bit too punchy. So that's okay. What I need to do is go under blend and then pull that back. And then pause it, like, you know, park it somewhere around here. Look at the amount of work we did. Nothing is blown out. Everything is protected. And just how much we were able to pull out the image. We're already getting so much detail. This is the kind of stuff that a pro would do before he even gets into uh, working on the power windows. So what do, I, what do we need to do now? Maybe you know what I can do? I'll go back into my uh, printer lights and we can pull out some of the green because I feel like we're, we're getting a bit too heavy on the green and then maybe go easy on the red. So something like that. And uh, it's looking a bit more moody. 
And like, look at that, how much difference we made in our primaries and then how much difference we made just by using this. And now if you still think that, that it's kind of on the nose and it's just a bit much, we can go in our blend and keep splitting that difference. So like this to me is looking pretty good. I want to leave it right there. I think that's totally fine. Now let's start working on our power windows. So the first thing the pro would do is go ahead, create a grad window instead of a circular window, because using the right window is where it all starts. If I hit shift H and look at this, I'll do something like this, pull this up like right here, move this around somewhere like this. And then I go under my primaries and this is what I do. I go under my gamma and I pull this down. All right, look how much more natural it is. We're controlling this. We're bringing all the top down as well. So our focus is automatically going here. Everything belongs, nothing sticks out. So that would be my first move, okay? Second thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do another grad window. I'm gonna put this one over here. I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna hit shift H and I'm gonna park it somewhere around here. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go under my gamma. This is not serving us in any form, okay? So we need to put the focus here, take this out. So I'm gonna go under my gamma. I'm gonna pull this down. I'm gonna probably go pretty heavy. So look at this, before and after, all of a sudden the whole image is looking so three-dimensional. And we are we can pretty much park it here and it looks great. Like we don't really need to do anything because we exposed ourselves for our guy and the car and those things were looking great. So we don't even need to do anything else. But once again, let's just be overachievers and keep pumping more information in this image. So I can go in here, I can create another window, I can raise it up and then pull it down a little bit. I'll keep the focus a little bit like this. So I'll do that right there. And now I'm just gonna go again in my gamma. I'm gonna pull this information, like, you know, bring it down a little bit. But once again, these grad windows are perfect for making it look like this is exactly how it was shot. Now we can move to this window right here and look at the beautiful thing, okay? So I'm gonna show you two things. One, let's click on this pen tool and start creating a shape like this and you'll see what I mean, okay? So we'll just create a shape like that and bring this up and then join it. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go under our curves, turn on editable splines, click right here, grab this from here and raise it up and look how much better this feels and looks, okay? Now I'm gonna go back into my window. I'm gonna start softening it up and I'm gonna soften it up quite a bit. And now if I come out of there, and if we do on and off, look how much more organic this feels compared to like a circular window that has like really harsh edges, okay? And what we can do now, go under our tracker and it's super simple. Track back, click here, track forward. And that's it. It's been tracked. And now what we can do, one more thing that I can show you is we can right click, select add node type outside node. Now it's gonna select everything that's not this. And in here, we can go in our gamma and just pull it down a little bit, not too much, okay? We don't wanna exaggerate. Just pull it down a little bit like this, even something like that. And it did all the work for us. If I hit shift H, it just leaves this and then it just controls everything else and it created that for us and it's tracked because it's carrying the data from here. You see the key right here. So it's carrying that data. We don't have to retrack anything, recreate any windows. The work is done for us. And guys, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Let's go look at the two versions. I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna right click, make sure we go in here and then kill this. And I also want to make sure that the other version has all the nodes turned on. So now if we look at these two and uh, come back in here, make it full screen, hide this, hide that. And if we look at the difference between the two, 
once again, you guys might be looking at this and going, okay, dude, you exaggerated the F out of it. You just went too nuts. The point was to tell you that when people create shapes, they forget about what we have available in our frame. How can we maximize what's available before we go in and just go nuts on these shapes? Now, one thing that jumps out to me that I would change just, you know, being a colorist, like it's sticking out really bad is like the color right here. I feel like this white is just not working for me. I'm not really in love with it. So one thing that I would do here is I would go under my high range, pull it back a little bit. And then uh, this is what I would do. I would just start adding a little bit more color. So like a little bit more yellow, like just add a bit more warmth. So even something like that. And if I do before and after, like we made a big difference, especially before and after here. So if I click, see, it's just like gunky, weird green. And like this just like really brings it all together and it helps out with that. So guys, look at this. What we had, obviously a bit more exaggerated example of like what you guys might be doing, but you still get what I'm saying, like where the windows are just not feathered out completely. They're not tracked and everything is uh, dependent on these nodes instead of like working on your image properly. So hopefully this was helpful. Let's kill everything here and then build it from scratch. So a pro went in as a pro knowing how to get the best out of their image. And then they worked on their primaries to just dial in the initial look. And then they used their glow to further enhance the image and, uh, First window was to just bring the top down a little bit. The second one did a lot to put our focus right here. And then the third one brought the floor down just to, again, put the focus on our guy. And then we created a custom shape, very subtle window to bring out our hero and then created an outside node, brought everything else down. We also tracked this window and automatically that tracking data was delivered to our node number seven, which is the outside node. And let's Check out the final look in full screen. So besides the comical exaggeration, as I talked about for the beginner part, you can see the potential of using Windows the proper way. Hopefully this video was helpful. Make sure you take advantage of the special offer and join 4,000 students in the masterclass. And on that note, if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and I will see you in the next video.